What's going on? This is David Whitney with Alpha Hulk Fitness. All right, guys, like the description says, this video is about intermittent fasting and muscle protein synthesis. Now, in preparing for this video, I was looking at the work of people like Dr. Lane Norton, Dr. Lehman, Stu Phillips, and Martin Berkham, among others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link some articles and some studies in the description box, and you guys can check that out after the video if you want to see some of the research. All right, so let's take a look at how it works, how muscle protein synthesis works while we're intermittent fasting. Now, while we're intermittent fasting, we're fitting all of our macronutrients into a small eating window. The Lean Gains protocol is an eight-hour eating window, but I know a lot of us are trying to get even smaller eating windows than that so we could get so we can maximize the fat loss benefits of intermittent fasting. Now, here's the thing. I was always led to believe that we could still optimally utilize, optimally utilize all of our protein inside of this small eating window. But upon further review of this research, now I'm finding out this really isn't true. And let me explain why. All right, so when we're starting our e eating window, our amino levels are baseline. Now, leucine has been shown to be the main driver of muscle protein synthesis. So when we get our first meal, if we got one gram of leucine, it initiates muscle protein synthesis. If it's two grams, it initiates, initiates muscle protein synthesis to a greater degree. Three grams has been shown to be the threshold of where we get the maximal amount of muscle protein synthesis. So this means for people like us that are getting large quantities of protein in each meal because we're trying to fit it in our eating window, a lot of it is not being utilized optimally because after three grams of leucine, there's no greater benefit on muscle protein synthesis. Now, at first glance, you might say, okay, well, what if I just keep it, what if I don't get more than three grams in each meal, but I just put, keep it at three grams constant throughout my eating window? Then I'll be optimizing my protein to get the greatest amount of muscle protein synthesis for the whole eating window. But now it doesn't actually work like that because it's been shown that you need a refractory period of where the amino levels will taper off and go back to baseline and then be spiked again to initiate muscle protein synthesis again. You see, we get our leucine. Let's say we get three grams of leucine and initiate muscle protein synthesis. Then even if we keep adding aminos into our bloodstream, the muscle protein synthesis will taper off regardless. And it won't rise again even if we keep spiking our level. Well, no, sorry. Even if we keep um, the levels of aminos at the three grams, it won't rise again. It will taper off. The only way to get it to rise again is with this refractory period where the amino levels taper off with the muscle protein synthesis, and then we spike our leucine level again up to three grams. Then we'll initiate muscle protein synthesis again. Now it's been shown through research that it takes anywhere from three to five hours for the amino levels to baseline. So what this means is not only are we wasting a lot of the protein that we're ingesting, but if we're just trying to fit large quantities, we're never even initiating muscle protein synthesis again after the first time that we initiated. So let's say I got a four hour eating window and I'm just getting massive amounts of protein. I only initiated muscle protein synthesis the very first time that I ate. And then after that, it's gonna taper off and never get um, initiated again. Does this mean you're not gonna grow muscle? No, it just means you're not gonna do it optimally. So what's the solution? Abandon intermittent fasting? No. What I'm doing is something that Dr. Lane Norton suggests in one of his articles that I'll link below, and something that I'm calling protein sparing intermittent fasting. Now in the past, there's been protein sparing fasting, but what I'm doing is called protein sparing intermittent fasting. And the way it works is this. When I wake up in the morning, I consume some protein. Now you'll say, wait a minute, this is taking you out of the fast. Well, research has shown that just removing carbohydrates from your diet will actually mimic a fast and it will create the same metabolic effects in your body that you'll get from fasting. And when I say the metabolic effects, what I'm talking about is things like your glucagon levels will rise, um, you'll get fat adaptation where your body will utilize fat stores for energy instead of glucose, and you'll also get the nutrient partitioning benefits later in the day when you go into your eating window. So what I do is I start the day off by getting 
I see. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to have a minimal effect belt and have the lowest amount of calories I could to get to my three grams of leucine to initiate the greatest response of muscle protein synthesis. So what I do is I start the day off with a half a serving of whey isolate. Isolate because it contains no carbohydrates and is low on calories. A half a serving is around 55 calories. I do a half a serving of whey isolate, which contains a little over one gram of leucine, and then I'll add one serving of BCAAs, which contains two grams of leucine. So there I'm getting my three grams of leucine to get the maximum benefit of muscle protein synthesis. Now you might say, whoa, wait a minute. Aren't you the same guy that made the video stop taking BCAAs while fasting? Yeah, and you know what? That still holds true because that video was about people who wanted to do fasted training. And it's true, when you ingest these BCAAs in that protein, there is going to be a small insulin on rise, and you are going to be using some of the, some of the protein is going to be converted to glucose in your liver through glyconeogenesis, like I said in that video. But I reached out to Martin McDonald, and he assured me that if we're only ingesting around 20 grams of protein, the amount of the protein that's going to be converted to glucose is going to be very minimal. And actually... The leucine will raise our, our insulin levels slightly, but leucine actually helps with insulin sensitivity. So very, it's going to take us out to a minimal degree. There's going to be a slight um, conversion of the protein to glucose, but we're going to quickly return to the fasted state. And like I said, when just removing carbohydrates from the diet actually mimics the fasted state. So the effects are going to be very minimal on our fast, but it's going to be for a very good benefit. It's going to be for repairing and building muscle. And it helps me even get more benefit from fasting, which I'm going to explain in a second. So what I do is, like I said, there has to be a refractory period where we're letting the amino levels taper off so we can spike them again. So I have this serving in the morning where I'm getting my three grams of leucine, initiate a muscle protein synthesis, then I'll wait about four to five hours and I'll do the same thing again, initiate a muscle protein synthesis again. Now, what this, the benefit that this gives me to get even greater benefits from the fasting is I don't have to worry about starting my eating window earlier in the day. See, before I had to try to balance it out. I had to think, well, do I want greater fat loss benefits from the fast or do I want to hurry up and start my eating window now so I could initiate muscle protein synthesis? Now I don't have to worry about that because I'm initiating muscle protein synthesis all day long. So now I can, can condense my eating window even smaller and get even greater nutrient partition benefits when I do ingest my carbs. So I start off in the morning getting my three grams of leucine. I'll go about four or five hours. I'll do the same thing again. And then about three to five hours after that is when I start my eating window. All right, guys. Well, I hope this video has been informative for you because I know looking at this research has helped me out a lot. And like I said, I'm going to link all that in the description box. All right. I really appreciate everybody that's been liking and subscribing. It's really helping to motivate me with all your comments and everything like that and hearing your success stories. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe. And if you like the videos, share them with other people. Help me get these videos out there. Also, I got an Instagram account now, Alpha Hawk Fitness. So if you follow me, I'll make sure to follow you back. All right, guys, until next time.